I can help the Toronto Raptors because whenever I'm on the court, I'm doing things to help the team win. I can shoot the ball and play defense. I'm a three-point threat and I bring great leadership. Great defender and I uh, bring a lot of energy to the team. You know, doing whatever they ask me to do and just being a good teammate every day. Great organization, a uh, great team. Just want to be a part of that winning culture uh, going forward. It's my lifelong dream and I will accomplish it. It's not just my dream, it's a dream for my whole country. I've gotten tired of hearing just that I'm right on the brink of, of making a team. It's one of my lifetime goals. This is something that I really want badly. For me, it's, it's almost life and death. Um, that's how bad I want it, and that's what I strive for every day. Uh, leave nothing out there on the floor and go home with no regrets. <laughs> Thank you for coming out. It's another great day for us. Um, uh, we want to welcome uh, Jared Stollinger uh, to our family. Um, I don't know how this one fell on our lap, but it did. Um, we're really, really lucky uh, to have a high caliber player, um, a great basketball IQ, a big time rebounder, and somebody that's going to come and fill in uh, we believe uh, two positions uh, for us that's much needed. What an honor to meet uh, such a smart kid uh, with great det determination and uh, really excited to be a part of our program and um, came from a rival which makes it a little bit more edgy. Um, so um, <laughs> uh, we were really excited. How you doing? This is where they were like draft night and everything. Else. They moved my name. Are you still in Boston? Yeah. Oh, there you are. Like, right on the down here. Did it work? No. Try it. My mind's everywhere right now just because, you know, signing during the press conference, seeing my, seeing my old number, um, seeing my name on the back, uh, flip it over, you see Raptors on the front. Uh, <laughs> being in this locker room, the fans, the the, the support, um, I mean, you really can't put your finger on it. It's just so much excitement that goes on in, um, in Toronto for basketball. And the fans here are, are unbelievable, unbelievable, unbelievable. And um, I'm just so, I'm, I'm excited, man. I just, I just, I just want to, I just want to fast forward like it's like it's two games, simulate through the offseason, and just get just get right to the right to the games. He brings a lot. He's a great rebounder. It's, it's interesting when I do my notes. I always notice how many times a guy playing for a team has had a career high against that team. Right? You look at Jared's career high rebounding against Toronto, and it, it's not uncommon to see that. It's hard for me to walk walk into a gym and not at least make not, a shot. Yeah. Put him on a block and give him the ball. You can use that big butt of his to back people down and get your baskets. He's a tough kid. He's the kind of four that they haven't had here, well, in a long time. Joe, How you? what's good, fool? I didn't know you was over here. Yeah. Congrats. What you say? You just getting back? Yeah, yeah. How was it? Man, my time is all messed up, man. How you been? Good, bro. Congrats, man. Get the heavy. Get the heavy. When'd you get in? Just got uh, in. Yesterday. I got in yesterday. Did everything, and I'm about to be out of here. Yeah? Yeah. Going back. Where you going? Uh, back Ohio? home. Yeah, and then I'm going to go to Vancouver. How's pops and everybody? Good. Good. They can't wait to come up here. Yeah, I know. They're going crazy. It's going to be good. They're going crazy. I see the, the bugaboo caught you. <laughs> 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 Always up in the business. And I'm messing with you. <laughs> Today, we met with Pizza Pizza, We're trying to figure out the best marketing way to sell 
a pizza, you know, inspired by us. And uh, we had to come up with a sales pitch, uh, what type of pizza, what type of ingredients, and uh, the prices. And uh, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun just learning how to expand your mind other than basketball. You know, I know Fort Fist, I know 2C, but learning how to sell a pizza is pretty tough. <laughs> Wow, pepperoni, bacon. I got pepperoni and cheese. I like that. Keep it like that. Home style sauce. Yeah. Okay. You put spinach in it. Maybe a couple more veggies would be good. Yeah. We have a Greek theme on. We have like olives and feta. And Just put Damar and Kyle's face on it. That's how you sell it. That's what you need. You put Damar and Kyle. Damar and Kyle hold the pizza. There you go. In front of the CN Tower. With the Bam, there with you the go. Six. And Kojo, Kojo and Drake in the back. There you go. Damn. All right, so basically what we have for y'all is the six pizza. The Toronto Raptors three-point play. Our postseason pizza, you know, taking on the postseason with the Raptors. Now what is the six pizza? The six pizza is a combination of the four cheese blend plus one. We're going to throw in provolone and then nice pepperoni to make it six toppings. And then on the outside of the crust, we have cheese. Vegan uh, cheese, mozzarella, spinach raised uh, locally, gluten-free crust. Spicy Italian sausage, pepperoni, and, uh, and green peppers. And the, the marketing thing will have the dancers, you know, the nice bodies, you know, the people with the abs and everything. You have GTA's finest, Corey Joseph, Cardinal Official, Drake. You guys know sex sells, so everybody wants to see the you know, the good looking people. If you got a pizza box with Drake on it, they're not going to throw it away. They're going to hold on to it. They're going to want to keep ordering more boxes. Is Drake going to want his share of that? No, I think Drake will do it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Drake is the king of the pizza. Would any of you guys think about having a three point play dance when you hit a three? You go around like this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah.
a couple months or three months is what we've heard, you know, like, but we don't know, could be less, could be more. Um, so what, I think we'll see how surgery goes today. He's over there and he's, he's scheduled to have surgery today. I think we, we, have, to, we have to go back to the rookies and um, inexperienced players a little bit, but uh, that's, again, that's the nature of the NBA. You don't cry about it, it's opportunity, you know, and this is how you, um, you find players, you know. Uh, and then from Damari's injuries last year came Norman Powell, you know, and hopefully we're, we're, we're hoping that something will come out of this and uh, will make us a stronger team maybe when, when he returns. But this, all NBA teams go through this. He's a pretty darn good passer, and he's a skilled big man. And when he comes back, they'll be that much better but they're gonna to have to learn to uh, sink or swim without him, and my guess is they'll swim. But with every kind of situation that's negative, a positive comes out of it, so you're gonna to have to accelerate the growth curve of your younger guys like Pirtle and, and Siakam. These guys are gonna to have to adjust and start to grow a bit more quicker, and that's good long-term, and it's good for the rest of the season as well. It's a, it's a tough loss for them, because now you're talking about a veteran player that understood how to play, and now someone else has to step up into that starting lineup or, to, or into his spot, and it depletes your bench a little bit. So it's going to be something that they're going to have to overcome, but as a coach, I'd rather for something like this to happen early than late. The NBA, they said when it's going good, you know, just look back, you know, because <laughs> something is coming, so. So I'm not really big on that. So I think it was good. He's, he's really good. You can judge what he does on Norman because, you know, there's a little bit more to do. But for me, it was simple and clean. I like it. Game day tomorrow. It's real. It's real now. Yeah, it's, it's, it's there. I mean, that's what you dream about, you know? When you ready, fi it's finally there. I, I'm always ready. I mean. You starting, boy. You serious? You better. Hey, man, I'm ready. I'm always ready. Whenever my name is called, I'll be there. The way things are happening for me right now is just like it's like the the best like ever. Like you know, I couldn't even think about. It. I can't imagine this happening like this. So um, I'm I'm blessed and I'm excited. You know, just ready to go out and work hard. Obviously, unfortunate for Sully. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, so Sully. I haven't talked to him, but like, I mean, I know I heard that the surgery went well. Uh, I mean, Sully has been like he's been really helping me out since I got here. You know, like he's always like one of the, the vets that, I, like, I, he's talked to me all the time and trying to, like, you know, make me better. So, like, it, it really hurts me to see that he goes down like that because, like, I mean, I see him as a mentor and, like, he always calls me his rookie. So, like, he's always, like, out of that connection and, and he always trying to help me out. So, it really hurts me to see him go down like that. I just hope that uh, he comes back stronger. I know he will. I think he's been uh, carrying himself really well, you know. Um, I've talked to him about, you know, the, the feeling of the first game and what it's going to be like, you know, because summer, you know, we weren't thinking that, you know, this opportunity was going to come to him. So just like the feeling and, you know, just being ready for opportunity, you never know when it's going to come, you know, and, and it's coming to him um, early um, before the season even starts. You know, he was starting in the preseason with Sully being out. So he has that, that feel 
for what it's like to be out there with that first unit. But, you know, I'm really excited for him. You know, he's been working really hard, you know, so it's all about him just going out there and playing his game, not trying to do too much, being that energy guy and um, just letting the game come to him. You know, I think he's really excited and, you know, I'm really happy for his opportunity. It's the same thing that happened with me last year with Demari Carroll's injury. So, um, you know, I just hope for the best for him and he goes out and plays his game and all the best to him. It was an all-out battle between the Wichita State Shocker and the Canadian kid Brady Heslip, but in the end, Van Fleet is the 15th man on your Toronto Raptors squad. Toronto Raptors have made their decision, and Fred Van Fleet is their guide. He's a true point guard. Yeah. He knows how to play the game, and, and to me, if you're going to go down the list and you're going to look down the bench if you're a head coach, and you have to pull on your third point guard, you want to have confidence that that guy is not going to try and play out of character to get more minutes. He's going to do what you need him to do, and I think Fred Van Vliet did a great job creating that confidence. He had multiple opportunities, and he took advantage of them, and I always have respect for guys who have to grind it out to get in. He grinded it out, he got his job, and he's rewarded with a contract. So we, uh, we played Washington, I think, was the last preseason game. Flew back pretty late, landed about 1.30, 1.30 or so. And you know, as we were getting off the plane, and just told the five or six remaining guys that were trying for that spot to meet um, in the lobby, hang the hangar lobby there. And uh, each guy had their individual meetings, and I was the last to go. And Coach Casey and Jeff, you know, put us in. and told me told me that uh you know they were glad that I would be a part of their team this year and so many things I did well things I can do better um, but overall just a very positive meeting and, uh, I was trying to, to hold it all in and just you know take take what they were saying but the, the back of my mind I was just happy that you know that part of the process was over and I could exhale in that sense and then no, get back right back to work in the morning. Um, Fred Van Vliet, I'm from Rockford, Illinois. I spent four years at Wichita State University. Um, that's all I got. You know, kind of rough city overall. Um, not the greatest place to live in the world. I don't, I'm not one of those guys that brags about how hard it is for me growing up because it was normal and uh, you know, in perspective, from my friends and kids that I grew up with, I had it great. I was like the rich kid in the neighborhood, you know, but it took me to get to college before I realized that, you know, my family was low class, middle class as well. So um, I had it good, in my opinion, growing up. My parents, you know, uh, both worked and worked their, worked their tails off for me and my brothers to have, you know, good life and not have to worry about anything. And they allowed us to be kids, you know, but, once you leave home, you know, there's only so much a parent can do to protect you. So we went through our own struggles and wars in school and in the neighborhood and everything. Um, but I think all of that just made me who I am. And, uh, you know, I love where I'm from and I embrace it. And just trying to bring some positive change back to the area, but tough place to live. But in the end, it just made me stronger. You know, unfortunately, I lost my, my father when I was five. Uh, he was murdered in Rockford, and he was into some things, you know, maybe shouldn't have been, but he was just trying to provide for the family. My grandparents stepped in, and uh, they all, you know, it was a group effort, you know. It took a village, you know, for me and my brother, and then eventually my mom met my stepfather now. Wasn't our friend, you know, for sure, I could say that, but uh, he provided. And, you know, he was a strong male figure of my life and uh, put food on the table, roof over our heads. Like I said, we had no worries. As the years went on, our relationship, you know, the dynamic of that changed and grew. And, uh, you know, to this day, I, I call him my dad. So I was blessed to have him come into my life. And, uh, obviously, I think everything happens for a reason and it lined up the way it was supposed to.
50% of it is natural, and it's just my natural demeanor because, you know, I'm like that off the court as well. Just I'm just naturally a calm person. Um, but the other half comes from, you know, the way I was raised and the way I came up and being tough and having to go through different things that, you know, that shaped me into, into who I am today. So, you know, I was always playing with guys older than me. Um, so I had to do a lot of sitting and watching and learning and, you know, not being able to talk. And, you know, my voice wasn't really respected at the time. And just had to be, be the guy in the corner who was watching everybody else and learning. And I think, you know, that also played a big part. Everything happening all over again. I'm not the youngest guy on the team, but obviously being a rookie, we're pretty much all in the same boat. So get to sit back and learn from the older guys and, you know, speak when, when it's, you know, convenient for me. Uh, I definitely not trying to, you know, over talk anybody, but just being able to sit back and learn. But at the same time, keep those guys honest when I get the chance and practice and scrimmages and everything like that. Uh, definitely not backing down or anything close to it. Powell finds Van Fleet. Look at that wizardry by Van Fleet. And it's a blessing that I'm in this position. Uh, I'm really lucky to be a part of this group. Uh, but like, you know, from top down, DeMar and Kyle and those guys all the way down to me and Jakob, it's just good guys and it's a great environment to learn and get better uh, and also be competitive. For me personally, man, uh, a lot of energy, toughness, and just having fun with it. Like, I try to explain to people, but it's hard, like, I'm, because I'm not super emotional or like, uh, no demonstrative, but like I'm really living my dream. Every day I wake up, um, you know, some guys are struggling, like, I don't wanna be here, I don't wanna go to practice, but for me it's like, you know, this is my dream. I've dreamt of this moment since I was a kid. And to finally be here, you know, it's just surreal. And it makes me work that much more harder. Like, after they told me I was on the team, I probably had the most enthusiastic workout ever the next morning. Um, so I'm gonna just bring that that mindset and that attitude every day. Try to get better when the opportunity calls. Um, stay patient, but when I get in there, I'm you know I'm not leaving nothing out there. I'm playing every day like it's my last. It's weird, man. And I'm not I'm not gonna get super religious on you or anything, but I'm a spiritual person and like. My whole life has been like that, and for things to line up the way they have is, is just amazing. It, it can't be a coincidence. Um, from high school or AAU to my college, whole college team was the same way, and now to be here on the, on the highest level, and you still are with other guys who, like you said, maybe cast offs or people doubted them, things like that. And I think to me, those are the most dangerous, dangerous people and dangerous teams. Um, because they always have that chip on their shoulder and able to put in that work every day and have that extra motivation to, to go the extra mile. So uh, I'm, I'm super glad to be a part of a group like that and hopefully, you know, we can produce. <laughs>